Okay, um, I said I was going to do it. Let's see if we can do it. I want to format this. I know I'm getting all greens right now with my test, so I'm going to change the formatting here in Matrix 2D. Um, this looks good. Uh, Control F5. I know we'll get all green, but again, I'm just being very picky about everything, so we're good. Uh, commit that to SVN. Let me pause. Okay, good. And then I want to just glance at Matrix 2D tests and just see what we did for construction here. Test construction. We tested the identity matrix, but we didn't test uh, passing in explicit values like we did with Matrix 3D tests. See here how we, we, we did this for the Matrix 3D, but we didn't do it with the Matrix 2D. Do we need to? No, but I think for consistency, why not? Matrix 2D, uh, what do I call it? Victim, yep, victim, and yeah, I want to use the same formatting as we did there. So one, two, three, four, and unfortunately I know this test will pass, but I think it's still good to add it after the fact. So expect float equal uh, victim dot r zero like so parenthesis control l v v v v so row zero row one column zero column one column zero column one this should be one two three four control f five be sure we we run and still get all green we're good so I'm going to commit again pause the video okay so that's committed um Right, what's the next thing we need to do? I had it written down here. Oh, yeah. Uh, that's another thing, uh, another advantage to test-driven development that I've heard other people talk about. Uh, but I've also experienced it myself. But test-driven development, uh, if you have these tests you're, and the tests are driving your development, it also allows you to be a little bit more interruptible, either by other people or by whatever else interrupts your life as you're coding. I love to code in the middle of the night because... That's when I get the most work done. Nobody's around to interrupt me. Anyway, same idea. Test driven development is if you're doing test driven development and you have this thing kind of these tests driving where you're going, then it makes you more interruptible, meaning it's not as hard to get back into the zone after being interrupted. Uh, okay, long winded. Here we go. Matrix 3D tests. We needed to do matrix vector multiply. So let's do that. I'm going to make this simple. I'm going to grab this and put this right down here. We will call this our operator. Oh, can't do that. That's a keyword. Up, as we've done before. And then vector 3D. I have matrix 3D, but I don't have vector 3D. But I could rely on the fact that matrix 3D ends up including vector. Now, nah, let's not do that. Ah, pound include math vector 3d if uh, and the reason why I'm including this even though I know in matrix 3d we include vector 3d if I wanted to make that refactoring change meaning pull this operator out to a different all separate header file well this compilation unit would still stand and compile okay on its own so that's why I'm being picky about including vector 3d in here as well uh, I need the using using math vector 3d Go down here, vector 3D, victim, shall be 1, 2, 3. Uh, looks like I need to control KF this, back it up a little bit. Okay, good. Uh, vector 3D, victim prime, gets op times victim, and then expect float equal uh, victim prime comma parenthesis control L V V V or control V control V control V dot X dot Y dot Z so what should be the result over here I could just calculate it in my head but actually I'm gonna draw it out here I think I did in the previous time when we were doing uh, matrix 2D and vector 3D, but you can think of it matrix multiplication uh, 1, 2, 3, the, the way you probably learned in 
your algebra class, 7, 8, 9 is, let's see, and this is our vector, which is going to be 1, 2, 3. You probably learned in your algebra class that you take this row, uh, you line it up. Let's see here, you take this row here, you line it up on this column, you multiply all the individual elements. So this row, I'm going to take the 1 and put the 1 there, and this 2, I'm going to put the 2 there, and this 3, I'll put the 3 there. And then you, 1 times 1 is 1, 2 times 2 is 4, 3 times 3 is 9, and then we add these all up, which will give us a result of uh, 14. Is that right? 9 plus 1, yeah, 14. Uh, and then we stick that in uh, row 0, column 1, because we're taking the 0th row, or column 0. Row 0, we're taking the 0th row, lining it up with the 0th column, so that's going to end up in a result at row 0, column 0, which we'll put 14 here. And that's how you learn about it in an algebra class. But the way you learn about it in linear algebra, if your teacher's any good, is exactly what I have been showing you. Let me just, it might be easier just to draw this all up again. But 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. And this is 1. Actually, let's switch colors. This will be, uh, I'll go green. 1, 2, 3, like so. All right, the way I've been describing it to you is it's 1 times this basis vector plus 2 times this basis vector plus 3 times this basis vector. And the result you'll get will be exactly the same. If you take this row, line up with this column, and this row, then this column, and this row, and this column, you'll get the exact same result. But that's two ways of, think of thinking of matrix multiplication. In the algebra class, they taught us the row-column trick. In the linear algebra class, they teach you the, the uh, linear combination way of writing it, where we write the constants out here and make linear combinations of this these basis vectors. Do you like how much green I have on the screen? Does that help you? Ugh. All right, either way. <laughs> I know this should end up being a 14. All right, uh, let's see. And then what's the next one? It's it's going to be, let's, let's do the algebra way of doing it. It's going to be this row against this column. I could write this out like a column. I could format my code if you really wanted to see it as a column. I could definitely do this, and maybe it would help with readability, even though it takes up more white space to do that. But uh, let's see here. So it's going to be 4 times 1, 5 times 2, and 6 times 3. So that will equal 4 plus 10 plus 18, which will equal 28, 32. Alright, so 32 for the next one. And then the last one, ooh, these numbers are getting big. I'm not sure if I can handle this. It's going to be 7. Uh, times 1, 8 times 2, 9 times 3, which equals 7, 16, 27. Oh, golly, these numbers are hard. That's going to be 7 plus 7 is 14, plus 6, that's going to give us 20. Carry the 2. Oh, no, it looks like 27. Carry the 2. 2 plus 1 is 5. Okay, 50. Whew. All right, let's put a 50 here. So if our math is correct in our multiplication operation, then, in theory, we should get these values out, All right? I'm actually going to back this back up, but I think that was a good mental exercise. Uh, Control F5, this should crash and burn with some red. Yes, matrix vector multiply is no good. Let's go implement the operator. And that, we just said, was going to be in matrix 3D.inl. And I'm curious, how did we do that in matrix 2d.inl. Did we just... Yeah, I just wrote it out. And again, I think I talked about it when I wrote this operator. I could write a for loop that would do any general size matrix against any general size other matrix as long as the... as, lo as long as uh, multiplication was defined for those two matrices. But... 
Uh, since we call this function a lot, I'm going to unroll the loops and actually do it the hard way by hand. But now we have a 3D instead of a 2D, so the code's going to get a little more interesting. And I hate to spoil it, but eventually we're going to have to do a matrix 4D. Whew! <laughs> uh, yum. Okay. So let's use the return value optimization trick here. Did we use that here? Yep, we did. And then it's going to be... Ah, drum roll, please. Let's do matrix dot... Uh, what's the best way we're going to do this? It's going to be dot... I'll just do R0, C0 times right dot X plus matrix dot R0. I'm just, just going to use R0, C0 on all these for now. Right dot Y... Uh, plus matrix dot r0 column 0 plus right dot z and now I have exceeded the oh no okay I'm under 80 not not that I have to stick to that rule too hard but I'm going to be uh, all right hey I got a comma out here I don't like yeah I get rid of the comma all right so I know that this is the rough layout, but I know it's not the correct values. I can run the tests again. They still fail because we need to... I, I have my X's, my Y's, and my Z's set up, but now I need to change up which rows I'm multiplying with which columns. Uh, a hint, well, we could either work it out again or I could just uh, look at the way I did it in Matrix 2D. But the pattern is going to be... Um, well, I'll just draw it out. It might help. Okay, here's our 3 by 3 matrix. I'm going to say A, B, C for the vector here. But again, it's A times this basis vector plus B times this basis vector plus C times this basis vector. Well, so it's going to be A times the same column, but the row is going to change. All right? And B times the same column, but the row is going to change. So A, which is our X, I guess I should have said X here instead of A, but A times the same column, column 0, but the row will change. Uh, and then here, the column now, whoops, the column here will be 1, but again the row will change. And then the column here will be 2. But the row will change like so. Okay, hope this works. Drum roll, control F5, build, let's test. Oh, it's red. Where did I go wrong? Where did I go wrong? Let's let's ask the tests. I could have screwed up writing the test, or I could have screwed up writing this code. Where did I go wrong? Let's go into debug mode and figure it out. Matrix 3D tests. Uh, put a breakpoint here. F5. Okay, does this fail? F10? Yep, it did fail. So victim prime x uh, value was 14. x was 11, but I was expecting... What did we say to expect? We said to expect 14, but we got 11. So why did we get 11? Uh, let's look here. Let me just look here. Uh, we got 1... 2, 3, 1 times 1 is 1, 2 times 2 is 4, 3 times 3 is 9, 9 plus 4 plus 1 equals 14. So that tells me that our actual code here is probably wrong. Mm -hmm. X, row 0, column 1, that's right, row 0, column 2, right dot C. Oh, I'm so stupid. This should be a multiply. That's embarrassing. Eh, whatever. Uh, at least I I can admit my mistakes. Ah, it's all green. Okay, good. Woo! <laughs> okay, matrix 3D, vector 3D, test written and implemented.